This presentation has received financial support from Alcon Labs, Irvine, California. Femtosecond laser incision making. Incisions for cataract surgery have constantly evolved. From mountain blades to a laser sculpted microsurgical blade, the approach to incisions for fake emulsification has changed. With a decrease in size and the surgical site moving from the sclera to the cornea, Concerns regarding patency and sealing have led to the development of new materials and designs for incisions and manual surgery. With availability of newer, premium IOLs, these concerns also deal with the impact of cataract incisions on the optical quality of the eye. Therefore, well-made and well-placed incisions should allow for effective and comfortable fake emulsification. They should be self-sealing and should induce minimal astigmatism. Enter the femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery, FLAX. The use of femtosecond laser in cataract surgery brought new ideas and potential for incisions, capsulorexis, and nucleus fracture. In theory, application of femtosecond laser to the cornea for incision making should have allowed for standardized and systematic creation of many types of incisions. However, one limitation of the laser is that it has to be applied to transparent tissue in order to work. Placement of the incision very close to the limbus, which should allow for safer and more effective surgery for many surgeons, led to incisions that either would not open or take too long to open. Incisions that are placed very anteriorly in the transparent cornea, while easy to open, might increase surgical manipulation thus increasing risks related to sealing and astigmatism. While this is true, it is also true that creation of incisions presents limitless strategies regarding incision planes and sizes. It is possible to create a type of incision that leads to effective opening, low induced astigmatism, while still being placed at the best possible site. We will present in this film our optimal parameters and a study of the efficiency of these parameters regarding patency, opening, and induced astigmatism. Femtosecond laser parameters do not involve only energy, spot separation, or line separation. The plane configuration of the femtosecond laser device also involves size, arc diameter, and, in our opinion, what is most important, depth. Although it is possible to configure biplanar or even single-plane incisions, a three-plane incision, in our opinion, allows for best stability and predictability of results, both during and after fake emulsification. Starting with a third plane, while certain parameters may override this third plane, a well-designed third plane allows for better self-sealing. Having a third incision plane also allows for use of the corneal tissue as support, thus avoiding common problems such as poor self-sealing or fish mouth internal incisions. The second plane will provide the means and the path toward the anterior chamber. These incisions should not be too long, which would affect surgical manipulation, nor too short, which would affect sealing we have opted for a length of 1600 micro. The first plane is what we consider the most important plane. Application of the femtosecond laser leads to what may be called a Velcro or a zipper effect. This demands the use of blunt instruments to open the incisions. The fitting of a blunt instrument, such as a spatula or a Sinsky hook, into the first, deep plane does allow for fitting into enough space, leading to opening of the tissue. The depth of our first plane is 60%, which makes this easier. The following challenge is to place this incision as close as possible to the limbus. By giving a 70 degree inclination to the plane, the laser can be applied within transparent tissue. Only a very small portion would be affected by any opaque tissue, thus making opening of the incision easier and more effective. This is the final design of this incision. This is an anterior OCT of this incision. 
We can observe that even three months after surgery, the incision design is exactly as planned by the device. This design cannot be reproduced manually. Even carefully well-crafted manual incisions do not offer the same precision regarding size and design. Although three plain manual incisions may try to achieve a standard, what usually happens is a great variation in size, length, and design. After establishing these parameters, we retrospectively reviewed the video footage of 150 cases in order to evaluate success in opening and time of opening of the incisions. We also retrospectively reviewed 100 cases for surgically induced astigmatism. Reviewing global results, we observed that 137 eyes out of 156 presented a successful outcome. This represents more than 90% of the cases. If we evaluate according to placement, we can observe that temporal incisions present a successful opening rate of 99%. Regarding time, opening time presented a mean of 6 seconds. Temporal incisions presented a mean of 5 seconds. To our knowledge, this is the first time that opening time of the incision was used as a surgical indicator. Out of curiosity, we reviewed some opening times of manual incisions. Single plane stab incisions take approximately 7 seconds to perform. Surgically induced astigmatism is an important indicator. This SIA should be known and used for calculating toric IOLs. Overall results showed a mean SIA of 0.11. When we observe only temporal incisions, we see a decrease to 0.09 diopters. Variation of the SIA using femtosecond laser in these parameters was very low, approximately 6%, which demonstrates a very standard procedure. The use of femtosecond laser for incisions in fake emulsification may lead to a more effective surgery. However, in order to achieve this, the application of the femtosecond laser must be well designed. The three-plane incision following these parameters is another step taken to making flax a better surgery.